Hi, everyone. Welcome to your Daily Five. I am your host, Mish Schneider. And I thought for today, what we should do, considering the volatility that's come back to the market, considering that the fact that everybody that was thinking that the mega cap stocks were going to continue to go up, well, I've been sort of warning you guys that you have to watch some of these other sectors. We finally got a 10% correction, but only in the small caps. The others have corrected, but not nearly as much. So what I thought was really important as we continue here to see, is this it? Did we get the correction 10% and now everybody can jump back in the water? Or is this kind of a trap here based on other information? So I thought what we should do is take a look at the economic modern family. And I added crypto to it as well, because it is actually a member of the economic modern family. So let's move on. What I'm going to cover with you today is the Russells, the retail, transportation, biotech, regional banks, semiconductors. Yes, we're going to cover the Bitcoin and also the interest rates because they're a big factor involved. Okay, so let's take a look at the Russell 2000 here. I think we should start with the momentum indicators rather than look at the price first, because if you recall, I've shown you enough here with the real motion indicator and the momentum that you can get a fake out breakdown here and then it comes back up. But you could see how many times this tried to take out the 50 day moving average and then failed. And we have not been back above that 50 day moving average since. And of course, you could see the momentum in the last several days as price was going down, so is the momentum. And obviously, we're not seeing any kind of leadership here. So the question is, what is the momentum enough to spook me? Now, what at this point now, if we look at the momentum and we put the cursor back, the last time we were trading at this momentum was really back here in September. And the price was much lower. So the momentum is suggesting lower prices, just like as the momentum was climbing, it never really took out this for very long, a couple of days. And then even when we made the new high here, look at how low the momentum is. So we could say right now that the momentum is dubious, but not bad because it is at least popping from here. If we take a look at the price action, this is the 10% correct. And we had from this high at 233.41. And then now it got it stopped yesterday uh, at the low of 209.05. So there you go. That's the 10%. So you could see that we're getting a pop. Now, one of the other videos I've done for you is on reversals. When you get a new 60 plus day low, and then the next day it closes above the high. So it's still early in the day as I'm speaking to you, even though the price is trading 217.30, we still wanna make sure this closes at 214.45. So that means if it does, does that mean we're gonna head up another 10% from here and possibly make new highs? It's possible, anything's possible. But in terms of risk, you'd have to be risk willing to risk down to yesterday's low at 209.05, which would mean that you really have to think that it's gonna double that in terms of your risk reward. So I don't know if I'd necessarily be jumping into the water here in IWM, but I would certainly be using it for information and having a little bit of patience along the way. Now, the next one is XRT. Now, XRT, you can see, hasn't nearly broken down as much as IWM has, and that's a good sign. In terms of the momentum, though, the same thing. As this was trading above the 50-day moving average, except for this little blip right here until recently, we've been well below the 50-day moving average and now well below the 200-day moving average and the Bollinger Band in terms of momentum. Maybe this could capture some leadership here, but at this point, I again would want to see this prove out. And I don't know if I would necessarily chase it, but we do not have a new 60 plus day low here. This was back in, um, well, it's about 60 days, quite honestly, because this is May 12th, this is May 13th, and this happened on July 19th. So technically that is actually 60 days. So if that's the case, once again, we want to see a close above 92.35. 
But also, once again, I would be somewhat skeptical about getting heavily long until we at least clear two days back over the 50-day moving average. And even then, when we've done that before, it didn't really go anywhere. So this is why I'm building this case up for you with my foregone conclusion, but I may as well tell you now, is that I actually think we're establishing some kind of a trading range and a stagnating market, which means we could turn, as we're seeing this throughout the rest of the summer, and as we get into the fall, you buy the weakness and you sell the strength, because that's exactly what happens in a trading range. The next one is IYT. Now, IYT is probably the most important one, because this was the one that was cluing us when it made a reversal top here, that things weren't doing all as well as what we were seeing in NASDAQ. And of course, now we've had a big correction here, a $30 plus correction as of yesterday's low. And again, if we take a look at momentum, it actually flipped positive for a second. It almost looked like it was going to happen, except for the fact that with this reversal top, we knew not to get involved unless it took out that high. And now we've declined in this momentum. We're starting to show a little bit of an uptick here on the Bollinger Band for the leadership part. But nonetheless, we have a ways to go in momentum. So once again, you have to say to yourself, What's my risk reward? Now, I do like that it filled this gap that it left. The low yesterday was 245.48. Obviously, the high 249.28 has to hold today. We are $3 above that, $3, $4 above that. So again, this is good. If you wanted to trade it, obviously, you would have to do this on a more active trade. Probably, I would say, using this uh, open at around 248.86, it looks like it was almost a doji day. So I would maybe say risk to 248 and not all the way down to yesterday's low. And then see, maybe you can get a $10 move, which put it back up to the 50-day moving average. But again, let's look at it for information. That's the active trade. In terms of information right here, what we're seeing is maybe the worst is over, maybe, or maybe we're just going to head to a top of a range and that's going to be it. The next one to be looking at is IBB. Now, of course, IBB is doing great for one reason, Moderna. Moderna has gone ballistic. And again, here, just the opposite. We actually saw this rise above the 50-day moving average in momentum just as it rose above the 50-day moving average in price. You could wait for those perfect setups and forget about all the ones that are more wonky. Had you done that, then, of course, you would have already been making money. And even though you probably would have had a no loss stop at this point or a stop under the 50, you'd still be in it. And of course, if this can get through here, this thing can still go up. Again, we'd have to watch momentum. It needs to clear this 200 day moving average. Again, momentum was much higher back here. So does it have potential? Yes. Was it a good setup here? Yeah. When it corrected a few days ago back to the 50, you had another shot. Now I think you'd be chasing it. But nonetheless, it's a great lesson. Next one is KRE. Probably at this point, most interested in this as well, in that we had a good risk down to the 200 and the pop today and filling the gap. Momentum, again, not great, but again, also has been under this 50-day moving average since here. I don't think we have to wait all the way for the 50. But again, I would like to see this at least hold now, probably figure this low at around 61.24 to see if what this does at the 50-day moving average. But of course, with banks, that could actually finally be popping. So a lot's going to depend on yields. Now, what was interesting was semiconductors. New 60-plus day high, guys, if you're paying attention, that means the potential for a 10% correction would put this at about $26 lower or at about 230 something, and it went down to 242. So it didn't quite make 10%, but it did make about 8% correction. So that's probably good enough. Momentum, not great though. Momentum here was trying and it didn't, it kind of faked you out right here. And so that reversal really helped. So now I would say I would probably wait to make sure that this could hit the 50-day uh, moving average, and then also take out the 50-day moving average here. But I think you're going to run into a lot of resistance. Next one, let's look at the Bitcoin. So now people, everybody's been looking here at this big head and shoulders top. 30,000 was the neckline. Now people think that this is going to crash, and they may be right about that. But what's interesting about Bitcoin relative to the family is it's certainly not being used as any kind of hedge for anything. It seems to be on its own fumes. 
volatility has actually come in a lot. It's been a pretty orderly sell-off. So what do we look for now? This low was a new 60 plus day low at 28,908. To me right now, that's going to be the important number to watch. If it breaks down under 28,908, 28,908, then it's possible that we could see a move maybe down closer to 21. But if it holds that and starts to come back through that 30, then this could be a big fake out. Now, if we look at the momentum, of course, that also has been declining. But I would watch for this momentum to possibly not only get over the Bollinger Band, but if this momentum clears the 50 and we get a positive divergence, then that plus a move through 30, I think would probably prove a lot of the bears wrong at that point. And the last one to look at is TLT because there was a huge flight to safety with the TLTs and this too had a positive divergence here. As the price was down, this was over the 50 day moving average. Once it took out the 50 day moving average, look at that, you had a really nice move. Now, what do we got guys? A potential 60 day reversal high and of course, if it breaks down under the low, especially as we end the week on Friday, then that not only could mean that's the end of the flight to the safety for the bond market, but it could also potentially mean that this is a situation here where it could be good for all of the economic modern family as that flight to safety in bonds, I think, spooked the overall market. So now we need to see those bond traders feeling a little bit more relaxed about some kind of an economic recovery for real. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. You all have a great afternoon. Thanks so much and bye for now. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below, maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.